Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of you out here in YouTube land who are watching this and studying along with us. We're in Kay Arthur's study, Lord Teach Me to Pray in 28 Days. It is Wednesday, April the, what is it? 14th. Thank you. <laughs> in 2021 well you know the date i always put the date at the bottom of the video so you know you could get it from there and uh i've just decided uh unilaterally that what we're going to do is we're going to read through this study um as we go um now adrian and i have already studied we're doing one day at a time day one day two day three day four but we're meeting only three times a week so um I think it would be valuable to you folks out there if we just read the study for you and talked about it. And uh, there will be homework to do. There's always a little homework. And I encourage you to get a little notebook of some sort. Um, it's really good to keep a journal of things because uh, in a journal, you can see how far you've come. And you can see also when you start writing your prayers in these journals, you can see how God has answered them as you go back. And that causes praise and worship to spill forth. And you can share those with other people. Oh, I just remembered this, what God did last year. But, you know, part of the problem, I think, is we don't see or hear God um, because we're, we're not really paying attention, <laughs> you know, frankly. So have you heard God speaking today? Were you listening? Have you seen him working today? Were you looking? So that's what we're going to do. So, yes, um, we always start and end in prayer. So let's pray together. Oh, Father, we are so thankful that even in such a time as this, you have given us opportunity to study your word together with others. Though some feel they cannot meet face to face with their friends and their loved ones, Yet, Lord, you bind us together with the cords of love in your Holy Spirit. We are so thankful for the love that's lavished upon us in Jesus, our Savior, lavished upon us. That's an amazing thought. We who are far away were now brought near. And as we study your word and learn to pray and listen for your voice and speak, speak to you as our friend, as our father as our redeemer as our lord i just pray that you would uh, strengthen and encourage each one who is going along in this study and that you would cause us to be mighty warriors on behalf of our friends and on behalf of our our fellow believers and and on behalf of our family members thank you lord for the opportunity that we still have to do this in your holy name amen Okay, again, I've got this big fat orange cat who's going to start yelling at me. He's wanting to sit on my lap, of course. So, we'll come up. Yeah, you can come up. Come on. Well, oh, he's too lazy to jump. <laughs> okay, so let's, what, what we are going to do is just read through the text. And um, here, here is what I want you to do, Adrian. Read the first three paragraphs of day two for me. As we discussed yesterday, Christianity is a relationship. Good communication is essential to all such relationships. In any relationship, it is essential to listen, hear, and understand one another. Communication begins with God. He is the initiator of our salvation, and he does that by getting the good news of the gospel to us through his word and through his people. The Apostle Paul defines the gospel or good news in 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 8, which I did stop and read. <laughs> oh, and oh, can do you have it with you? I should have my Bible handy so I can get it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 to 8. Now I make first, first, I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Okay, sorry, 1 to 8. Yeah. Good. 
I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preach to you, which you also received, and which also you stand, by which also you are saved, if you hold fast the word which I preach to you, not, unless you remain. For I deliver to you as of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins according to the scripture. And that he was buried, <clears throat> and that he was raised on the third day according to the scriptures. And that he appeared to Cephas, then to the, then to the twelve. After that, he appeared to more than 500 brethren at one time, most of whom remain until now, but some have fallen asleep. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. And last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared to me also. Good. Thank you. Keep going. Okay. Um, and then it's briefly condensed the good news according to the scriptures. Jesus died for our sins and was buried, verses 3 to 4. And he rose again on the third day and was seen by many, verses 4 to 8. Good. So continue. Okay. Let's think about this good news for a few minutes. God sent his own son his only begotten son, born of a virgin, and therefore without the sin that human has at birth, to die for our sins, yours and sins and mine. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, just keep going. When Jesus was crucified, God took those sins of ours, the sins of the whole world, and placed them on Jesus so he might become sin for us, giving us his very righteous this an exchange, Second Corinthians five twenty one. Just looking for it. Just give me a second. I highlight these things so that I don't forget them. He made him who knew no sin to be sin yeah. for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. Yeah. Oh, that's one of my memory verses. <laughs> Being in wonder, beloved, at the love that would cause the one and only true God to give his sinless son so you and I might have eternal life. And God demonstrates his own love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5 8. What is the proof of eternal life? It is the second point of the gospel. God raised Jesus Christ from the dead, never to die again. The wages of, or payment for sin is death, Romans 6, 20. Because a sinless Jesus satisfied God's holiness and paid our debt in full, those who believe in Jesus pass from death to life. If we are true, true children of God, death will be like falling asleep on earth and waking up in the presence of God Almighty. You'll exhale your last breath of earthly air and in the next moment draw new lungs of full, full of celestial air. For the believer, death is coming home. Living in his presence forever and ever. Never to die a second death, which is the lake of fire. Rome, Revelation 20, 6 and 14. Good. Hey, so so this is the this is the issue that we're dealing with in our world right now. People are so afraid. People are afraid because they're afraid of death. For the believer, what does she say? Death is just going to sleep and waking up in heaven. Exactly. So we have nothing to fear. Okay, read the next paragraph. Okay, oh, it is time to talk to God, beloved. Are you realizing you can talk to him anytime? And to say, hallelujah, praise be to you for so great a salvation. Do you have forgiveness of sins? Do you have Jesus? They go together. Do you believe he is the son of God, the only savior? Have you received him as your savior, your Lord, your God? Good questions. Look at John 1 verse 12. And I did do that. And, I want just, hey, and hang on a second. I'm going to pause this for a minute. Just excuse me. I, I need to do something. Sorry, everyone. I had to go and get rid of that kitty. He was just too annoying. And I've had to shut the door. <laughs> okay. 
So where are you again now? Um, I'm at the, where it says, look at John chapter one. Oh, so here I am back again. Sorry about that, everybody. I had a cat who was irritating, so I had to put him out of the room. <laughs> and we were reading John chapter one and verse 12, which says, as many as received him, which is Jesus, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. And Adrienne just said that she had that written down. Yeah, because the whole, that whole passage is the problem. Yes. The word is, is, is Jesus. Jesus is the word, the word. It goes on in, the, if, when you, uh, when you uh, read through the entire of book of, sorry, chapter John 1, you understand this. Okay, continue on. And I was going to explain to the people out there watching that I have an older edition of Lord Teach Me to Pray in 28 Days, and my sister Adrienne has the expanded version. So that's what she's reading from for me, because I don't have it. <laughs> continue. <laughs> um, are you God's child? How do you know? What is your the proof of your salvation? Hmm. That was a lot of pondering. <laughs> because, yes, I am God's child. And I know because I repented of my sin and asked Jesus to come into my life. But the proof of my salvation was a ponderance. <laughs> because every day he walks with me and guides me. But how does that prove my salvation? Well, I think there's there's a big um, there's a big discussion amongst people about who is a child of God, which I think is important to, to just camp on for a minute, because not every created okay every created human being is a created human being created by God. Yes, but not every one of those is a, is a child of God, according to. John 1 12. That's right. So John 1 12 says, as many as received him, to them he gave the right to become children of God, even to those who believe in his name. And as you and I have been going through our Roman study, we understand that faith is believing what God says is true. Yes. And acting upon it. Yes. So in my mind, it's acting as though what God says is true, because it is. That's faith. And our faith is not in faith. Our faith is not in ourselves. Our faith is not in the goodness of humanity, because all at, in Romans, you read it, all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So the devil comes along and tries to get us to doubt our salvation. And uh, our salvation is evidenced in a changed life. So would you say that your life has been changed? In many ways, yes. Is it changing now? It changes all the time. Is it changing for the, for the worse or is it changing for the better? For the better. And would you say, would you say you're headed... In, on the goal of what God reveals as righteousness, or are you going in the in the, on the road which God calls unrighteousness? Uh, or righteousness. Yeah. And does yeah. your conscience and does the Holy Spirit speak to you in your conscience yeah. to tell you what's right and what's wrong? Oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, yeah, so things come to mind, and the Holy Spirit says, mm, not that. <laughs> okay, can you continue reading for me, please? Sure. If you're not sure, then ask God during this study, even today, to bring you into his forever family. And when he does, may I suggest you write down the date. I was saved at age 29 on July 16th, 1963, when I oh, was... Well, this is okay this is the author speaking so we don't need to to uh talk really about hers the, if the people buy the book they can get that that's that's the author's testimony so can you go past that a little bit give me a second okay 
Okay, now then look at one more important thing in 1 Corinthians 15, 1 and 2. 1 Corinthians 15, and that's second, I'm going to read this. 15, 1 and 2. Yeah. Okay, and this is Paul speaking, the apostle. Now I make known to you, brethren, the gospel which I preached to you, which also you received, and in which also you now stand, by which also you are saved. If you hold fast the word which I preached to you, unless you believed in vain, but you didn't. Okay, is that all from that? Yeah. Okay, continue, please. Just a minute, I got to bring her off. When we hear, receive, and stand in this glorious gospel, we are saved. Rescued from a meaningless life, rescued from death, rescued from hell, and we hold fast to that salvation. Endurance is evidence of your salvation. May I suggest you read these verses in your Bible and underline the verbs you just read. Receive, stand, save, hold, hold fast. If you have a different translation, you know, look for words with these meanings. Mm -hmm. Standing firm is a valuable truth that you don't want to pass over lightly. Good. Stand firm. Oh, definitely. When God communicates with humanity, we hear truth, and we either accept it or reject it. But we or anyone else, but what we or anyone else thinks about the Bible doesn't change. And what it is at its essence, the very words of God Himself, according to 2 Timothy 3:16 and 2 Peter 1:21. Oh, did are those written in your no, just um, Second. Second Peter three. Second Timothy three sixteen. Oh, sorry. Second Timothy. Second Timothy Titus. Timothy second first Timothy. Second Timothy. Say that again. Second Timothy what? Three sixteen. Okay. Says all Scripture is inspired by God and profitable for teaching for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that the person of God may be adequate, equipped for every good work. So that, um, and we're studying this in Romans as well, that the word inspired is theoptnos, that's the Greek, and I probably pronounced it wrong, but what it means is God breathed. All scripture comes from the breath of God, is the breath of God, and it's profitable for teaching, reproof, correction, training in righteousness. And the other scripture was? Second Peter 1.21. 1, 1.21. And it says, no, oh, I'm going back one verse. But know this first of all, that no prophecy, prophecy of scripture is a matter of one's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever made by an act of human will but men moved by the Holy Spirit spoke from God. So the, the, the breath was given them to speak what God's breath said, speaking, because we have to use our breath to speak. Okay. God's word was inspired or God breathed. The Greek word is the- Oh, you don't have to do that. I just said that. <laughs> I was trying to pronounce it. <laughs> so that the holy men of God spoke and wrote as they were inspired by the spirit of God according to the Bible itself the Bible is God's word and it is truth God's communication to humankind and it says let's review what then is prayer and I just simply said communication with God yes so um, does prayer have to be out loud? No. Uh, does it have to be in a particular posture? No. Does it have to be in a particular place? Now, see, that's where I get confused further on in this study. Further okay, does it, does it have to be? Those are good questions. So I'm just asking these questions now. Um, does it have to be given, rendered by a particular person? No. Okay, keep going um, as you will. What role is prayer to take in our lives? How important should it be? How important is prayer to you at this time in your life? 
<clears throat> well, here we are in this time and space. Um, I think that uh, there are many prayers <clears throat> going to God, <laughs> you know, in this time and space that we live in. Yes. Some are in desperation. Some are in thankfulness. Um, and others are asking for things. Okay. And I don't mean things for themselves, but for God's will to be done, etc. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm asking God for a greenhouse, so. <laughs> God knows what we need. So anyway, so continue on in your in your book because it's totally different from mine. I basically said we should daily pray. We should we should pray daily, and we always need to be in communication with God mm -hmm. so that He can guide us. As for me, I struggle to pray at times because um, I never know what to say, and I never. I feel like I'm saying the same things over and over and over. Hmm. But as the time goes by, I'm discovering it's becoming more and more important to me to pray than it was before. So in my particular life, okay, so here's the struggle, I think. <clears throat> you and I grew up in a household that prayed, but we never heard people speak out loud prayer except at mealtime. Yes. Well, maybe you did, but I didn't. No, no, no. It was mostly at mealtimes. And so with that, with that in mind, I know, and we, when our church did, uh, we did a special program on prayer. And that's what was discovered that a lot of us, even though they might've been godly homes, did not grow up where people spoke prayer aloud. And so then I heard that's aloud in church. Pardon me? The only time I ever heard praying aloud was, was in church. church at prayer meetings or during the church service. Yeah. And I'm sure that there are a lot of other people and so that feel that same way, who ha have that same experience. So what the I found at that other little it wasn't little, um, that uh, training session was very helpful and I've had several training sessions um, that ha were helpful in speaking aloud and I want to encourage anyone who is watching this and you too and me too here Adrian that that we're going to learn how to do this we're going to learn to do this and to not have to not feel so dumb about it um, and to learn to speak aloud as, as though God, as though, as though Jesus is walking right next to us, because he is. You can't see him, but he's there. Yeah. So it's the familiarity, I guess, you know, that's it's, but I think, you know, we're going to learn this in, in the study as we go through that the prophet Daniel prayed three times a day, and that was his habit. So sometimes I think it's going to be valuable for us to set aside to say, this is going to be my time to pray. For myself, just to let you know, I find it much easier to write down my prayers. I think things through and I write down my prayers as I study. So it might not be a great long prayer or it might be a, a prayer like a, almost like a Psalm of praise, you know, from what I'm reading or from what the Lord is teaching me. And sometimes I'm just walking in the orchard and just telling God how beautiful the world is today. And listening for his voice to hear if he has anything to speak back to me that I've been studying, because we do study the scriptures so that we can hear God's voice. Continue in your reading, will you, for us? Um, how often are we to pray? Look up 1 Thessalonians 5.17. And answer the question from the word. God. Okay, just wait, wait, hold on. You gotta let me get look up for first Thessalonians five. First, there's second. First, second Thessalonians five thirteen. Seventeen. Seventeen. Oh, okay. 
this is the passage that says rejoice always pray without ceasing in everything give thanks for this is god's will for you in christ jesus and the the, the singular verse is pray without ceasing yeah and and then it says uh, i am to pray without ceasing <laughs> that's easy mm -hmm. what does this really mean that i am to stay on my knees in a specific place doing nothing but praying for heaven's sake no note i said for heaven's sake we must be about our father's business and that requires us getting in the world and not only offering others the word of truth but, but also showing them by our lives how life is to be lived out in circumstances just like theirs what does it mean then to pray without ceasing it means to stay in communication with god to talk to your father about everything i see it as a command to walk in continual dependence upon him realizing that he is a god who is there he is a God who will supply all my needs from the need to worship to the need for protection from the evil one. In other words, I am to communicate, I am to commune with him nonstop as if he were by my side at all times, which he is. Can I just say that? I, I didn't even read your book. <laughs> when we live like this, we show our dependence on him and the value we place on his wisdom and leadership in our lives. With every day that goes by, I see more and more people wearing those little cell phones clipped to one ear. <laughs> They're not so little anymore. Yeah, I know. <laughs> uh, I'm sure you've noticed, well, yeah. It used to look so strange and unusual, but the practice is becoming more common all the time. You see these users of many of many cell phones seemingly talking into empty space, and when they look your way, it's as if they're looking right through you. Walking around with a phone clipped to your ear, however, doesn't mean you're always talking, but it does mean you can be connected at a moment's notice, wherever you are, whatever you're doing. When you see those clip, ear clip cell phones, let them remind you to stay connected with God, to not only talk to him about everything, but also tell him throughout the day how much you love him, need him, appreciate him, and depend on him. But to pray without ceasing is to stay connected. Mm -hmm. Okay. When Jesus was with the disciples on earth, he was our living example of how God intended for us to live when adam failed to do so failed to do and be in the garden of eden jesus the last adam which is from romans 5 14 and first corinthians 15 45 in case you want to look it up later huh in case our people want to pause say that and look that up in their own bibles say those yeah. references again uh romans 5 14 and 1 Corinthians 15, 45. Thank you. Those who became Jesus' disciples not only heard his teaching on the importance of prayer, they also observed it in his life. After Jesus prayed in a certain place, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Ah. Oh, what precious words those are to me. Can you guess why? Because they show me that prayer is a skill that can be learned. If prayer is a skill, if prayer is a skill, then it's something I can develop with time and practice. And that gives me great hope. Yes. Yes. So just like just like just like you and I and those who've fought, who've come along with us are learning to study the Bible inductively learning to let scripture interpret scripture and to be good observers of what the text is. That's a skill that we're learning. So is prayer a skill to learn? And yep. because, because a lot of us, there are many people who were not raised in Christian homes and they never heard any prayer except for, oh God, you know, or, or in a swearing kind of way. Um, but there are also those of us who were raised in Christian homes whose prayer people's prayer lives were so private they didn't come out of their mouths. Yeah. 
and, and I'm not criticizing that or anything. It's just the way it is. So we did not really, we do not feel confident in prayer as a result. We heard a so, lot of, we heard a lot in our childhood, a lot of flowery prayers of these and thous and thinkest that. <laughs> well, maybe by the time you were, you came along, you probably didn't hear those kind of prayers, but we thought that that's something that you learned in the seminary, you know, in order to become a, an elder or something like that, or a preacher. Okay, what else is on there in that? Oh, I'm still done. not even done yet. Okay, how many pages is that, by the way? Uh, they, oh my, that's a lot of pages. Okay, so I'm going to I'm going to shorten things up here. <clears throat> you have, yeah. Pardon me. I have a still got one, two. Oh, three. forget it, forget it, forget it. Because what we want, mine is much shorter. <laughs> And, and I think I'm going to get the other book ordered in. What I was going to say, though, however, is that in Luke chapter 11, verse 2, the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray, which what is what we were just talking about now is that it's a learned skill. So I'm going to read this passage of Luke chapter 11, verses 1 to 10. And what we're going to think about is, why Jesus chose that illustration that he, he uses. Okay, here it is. And it came about while, that he, while he, and we're talking about Jesus, was praying in a certain place. After he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John also taught his disciples. And he said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins for we ourselves also forgive everyone who is indebted to us and lead us not into temptation so let's do it the way we learned it our father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Now, I don't think um, the last bit is in every translation or in every book, but um, every gospel. But that's the way we learned it in school when I was in school. And he said to them, suppose one of you shall have a friend and shall go to him at midnight and say to him friend lend me three loaves for a friend of mine has come to me from a journey and i have nothing to set before him and from inside he shall answer and say don't bother me the door's already been shut and my children and i are in bed i can't get up and give you anything i tell you even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is a friend yet because of his persistence he will get up and give him as much as he needs. I say to you, ask, and it shall be given to you. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it shall be opened. So in my book, it says, prayer is not easy. Prayer is a discipline, and discipline requires persistence. In this passage, the verbs ask, seek, and knock are all in the present tense in the Greek, which implies continuous or habitual action. So that means keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking. And I think that that is maybe where you um, are having and I have a problem. We think that... I, I we think we're repeating the same things over and over again. Yeah. So why does Jesus tell us to keep on asking, keep on seeking, keep on knocking? Why doesn't God answer our requests the first time? Do you think that maybe it is to keep us in constant communion and to teach us persistence in the process? Here's a prayer that's written in my book. Oh, Lord, to be honest, I'm overwhelmed. I really wonder if I'll ever be able to pray like Elijah. 
But Lord, I want to learn. Teach me how to pray. Teach me the effective prayer of a righteous man that avails much. I'm going to ask and ask until it's mine. I know it's your will. Thank you, therefore, for hearing this prayer, and I ask in the name of your Son. Amen. So that was day two, and uh, you have a lot more in your book. Three as well. Pardon me? That was day three as well. Oh, that was day three as well. Okay. So, we read of other people who spent hours and days in prayer. I am like a rabbit, or I am like that dog in the movie that says squirrel, and I get distracted very easily. And that's why I like to write out my prayers. I think there were a lot of men and women in history who have written out their prayers because you can read their books of their prayers. But I think that it's very important for each one of us to understand that we are not comparing ourselves with other people. Right. We are developing our own prayer life with the Lord. And if you had a little kid that you loved, you wouldn't push them away if they came to you. No. you and, and that's how our Father is with us, our Heavenly Father. <coughs> so the way that discipline works is bit by bit, little by little, over time. I know this as a musician, you know, you develop skills bit by bit, little by little, over time with a lot of repetition. So those disciples had seen Jesus praying and they knew he knew how to pray. So we're going to the expert, the Lord Jesus Christ, the word of God. Yeah. So the Lord gave them the Lord's prayer, which is what we call, and we recite that. Yeah. But he said, when you are praying, do not use meaningless repetition. And that's from Matthew chapter 6 verses seven and nine. And I think that that may be where we get hung up because we know this scripture and we think, is this meaningless repetition? Are we just saying the same thing over and over? Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna read out of my text because this is day three and then we're gonna wrap it up. The Lord's prayer was not meant to be a prayer said by rote. Rather, Jesus was using the same manner of instruction that the rabbis of the day used. He was the teaching the disciples an index for prayer. Index prayers were a collection of brief sentences, each of which suggested a subject for prayer. I believe, as do others, that the Lord's Prayer states for us in topical form the ingredients necessary for effective prayer. Nowhere in God's word did the disciples say to Jesus, teach us to pray. Oh, wait, nowhere else. Sorry. <laughs> Whew. I almost caught an ear. The, nowhere else did Jesus directly say, pray then in this way, than in Matthew 6, verse 9. Therefore, to pray according to the index or the outline of the Lord's prayer is to pray an effective prayer that will avail much. So here it is in our notebook, in my notebook, it says, why don't you covenant before God that without fail, you're going to set aside a specific time for prayer each day for the next 25 days, because that's how many, many we have left in this study. Tell him you're coming to him as a learner. Tell him if he doesn't help you, there's no hope because there isn't. During your prayer time, talk with him about what you have learned. Don't compare yourself with others or try to measure up to their prayer lives. It's just you and God, child and father. He's waiting and eager to have that time alone with you. So this is this is where our journals are going to be very, very important. And uh, in my book, there's a place to write notes. Is there a place in your book to write notes? Yes, there is. Okay, so today is Wednesday, so we're going to have Thursday will be day four, and Friday we're going to take up day five. So we'll actually discuss day four and day five together. Yes, uh, my version, my book is a longer version. Yes. So it, 
it, it's a lot more reading than yours. Okay. So you got a lot more reading than I do. <laughs> I think this is uh, actually, I think this is a newer version of the first time even that I did the study. So they've updated it, right? Uh, I might just order your, your copy too. Um, if you look on your day five, is that where you have the index sentences written down? No, mine says prayer begins with worship. Okay, so day five for you is not about the index. So okay. we're going to... second. I'm definitely going to get the expanded version. Okay, so I just want to sign this off for the people who are watching us on YouTube. We're, you know, this, this study is just us being real, being sisters in really, and sisters in the word and in Christ as well. And you're, we are so glad that you're here with us. And we hope that you'll get your own book, study along with us. And if you don't, uh, we don't mind if you just listen into our conversations this morning. <laughs> <laughs> or any of the next mornings. I found another really great link of a of a, um, of a, another man's prayers. So that will be included in the description box uh, below this video. And please, if you're watching this and you've never seen it before, please look like this video and subscribe to it. That helps us to um, get good news out to other people. And if you are not going to join our study, then we just welcome you to or encourage you to go to preceptministries.ca or precept.org in the United States or wherever it's found in your country and find a Bible study local to you. But really, with the Internet, there's lots of Bible studies that are local to you at times that you are able to attend in person. So I really encourage that. Anyway, thanks everybody for listening in. I'm going to pray. Father, we are we're glad that you you are teaching us to pray and that you're patient with us and that you understand that we lots of us have not had um we've not had training in this before and we don't criticize or we don't hold it that against anybody because we're so thankful we're here and we're learning. And so, Father God, just remind us of your presence in all of the tasks that we have today. And remind us that we can talk about all of this with you. Whether we are watching some kind of news article, we can discuss that with you right out loud. And there's no one to criticize for it. And as we go about our day and, and we have some disappointments, we can, we can talk about that with you. Or when we have some wonderful joy, we can talk about that with you as well. And Father God, I'm just trusting that you are making us into great, effective prayer warriors through this study. And we're just uh, hoping in you and trusting in you to do that in us for the praise and glory of your name. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys, see you next time. It will be Friday, 11 o'clock. If you want the YouTube link, go to my website, luannash.ca and fill out a form and i will send you and you can sit in live with us see you next time <laughs>